ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا وسيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله after praising Allah the Almighty Azza wa Jal and passing salutation upon his messenger Muhammad, may peace and blessings be upon him. We praise Allah Azza wa Jal that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had given us another chance to live another day and inshallah witness another night from the nights of Ramadan. This is the month where it is now at the moment is coming to the end of it. Believe it or not, we just started Ramadan and we are about to say farewell to the month of Ramadan. That's how the days are passing, and they are passing so quickly and quicker than before. Because the Prophet said, and he said, as we get closer to the day of resurrection, then the time would shrink so much that the year would become like a month, and the month would become like a week, and the week would become like a day, and the day become like an hour. And for those who are people who are righteous and people who are striving to do their ibadah, they know what I'm talking about. They know that this is the time when they shrink, but for those, who have nothing to do, and for those who have no dhikr of Allah Azza wa for, for sure, these people, they think the time is so long and that's why they commit suicide. <coughs> so, the time is passing and we need to invest in our time. And from those things that we should invest in, is what we're talking about for tonight, is the i'tikaf. So we need to understand what is the i'tikaf and where is the i'tikaf is permissible, and what is the reward of the i'tikaf. Uh, what is the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam regarding the itikaf? What are the conditions of the itikaf, and what makes the itikaf invalidated? All of that, inshallah, will be discussed in this lecture, bi idnillah. And of course, the, during that lecture, we're going to be talking about the night of Al Qadr because the night of Al Qadr is happens to be in the last ten nights of Ramadan, as we're going to see. Al itikaf in the Arabic. I'm going to do something except with the permission of Allah Khaytan. I don't want to stop the lecture. Barak Allah Fiqh. Al-i'tikaf luzum al-masjidi li-ta'ah. That is to abide yourself to the masjid with ta'ah. Obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ah. So the person basically divorces his dunya in order to come and focus on ibadah more than he does if he's outside. So if he's in the masjid, then he would be focusing on recitation of the Qur'an, focusing on, uh, for example, the prayer of the Taraweeh, prayer of the Jama'at, focusing on contemplating and minimizing as well the Mubahat, indulging into the world issues, and that would also minimize for him to gossip and backbite and slander and all of it. So it is not correct for the person just to make etikaf, and the word in English is, I think, seclusion. It is not right for the person to make that etikaf just with the body. Meaning that he comes inside the masjid, but he brings his world with him inside the masjid. So all what he does outside, he's going to do it inside. So his laptop, or his tab, or his mobile, and those things that we call them fitna, fitna, subhanAllah, and it could be blessing from Allah Azza wa And these people bring those things to the masjid and they have more time now to, uh, for example, respond to their messages in WhatsApp and Viper and all of those social medias. And that is not the reality, Kaf. Some other people, if they don't have those phones and mobiles, they start with the people who are making the Kaf, the chit chats. The chit chat is, for example, to do with the deen. To, for example, to ask something about halal haram, to ask um, what is the religion, what is the memorization, for example, you're revising in front of somebody, that's no problem. But the chit chat that is taking place these days, that ends up with argumentation, and ends up even with boycotting, and ends up with the people that may be even using physical hands, and you've seen etikaf where people, you know, punch each other. That's not etikaf. This is going into uh, an arena that we're going to be wrestling. So the etikaf basically is not just a physical etikaf, it's a spiritual etikaf. Meaning that I want to come to the masjid, I want to focus. So the best thing I would say for the person who wants to make etikaf is to hand his mobile and all his, you know, things 
which are can link into the outside world. There's no problem to have a laptop where it's just not linked with internet whatsoever. So uh, the phone is to be there, and for the family, you could have emergency to phone the masjid, okay, to phone the masjid if it's in case. But the person's got nobody to worry about him, you don't need any mobiles. So focus on your ibadah, come to the masjid, and concentrate. What we're going to see, inshallah, what are the, what we believe, where the, the, the itikaf is permissible or not. Inshallah, we're going to come to that point. Now, the itikaf is thabit of the Quran, was sunnah of Egypt. The itikaf is confirmed in the Quran and the Sunnah and also in the consensus of the companions. As in the Quran, وَلَا تُغَشِرُهُنَّ وَأَنْتُمْ عَاكِفُونَ فِي الْمَسَجِدِ And also Allah said, وَالْعَاكِفُ فِيهِ In the Surah Al-Hajj. So uh, don't make a mubashara, that is intercourse with the wives, when you are making itikaf in the masjid. That's in the Quran and uh, it's in Surah Al-Baqarah and also in Surah Al-Hajj. And also in the Sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, the Messenger of Allah made the itikaf in the month of Ramadan. He made the itikaf in the first beginning of Ramadan, and then afterward he made the itikaf in the middle of Ramadan. Then later on he started to make the itikaf at the end of Ramadan, and he kept doing it at the end of Ramadan, except for the last years before he died, where he made the itikaf to compensate for the itikaf of Ramadan in the month of Shawwal, as we're going to see. So the Prophet وسلم, he made it ikaf in the beginning, and in the middle, and at the end. And he made it ikaf in Shawwal to compensate. And also we have Umar al-Khattab, radiallahu anhu. He had made a, a, call, a request from the Prophet وسلم, to ask a question. He said, Messenger of Allah, I made a vow to make it a night in Masjid al-Haram. So he said to him, Aw fi minadrik, fulfill your vow. And that was not in the month of Ramadan. So, in this way, we could understand now the i'tikaf is not compulsory, it is recommended, and the reward for that, man jaa bil hasanati falahu ashu amfaliya. He who brings the hasana, then in the rizwaq, ten times, it's like. So, that is the minimum you're going to receive for any hasana that you do. And also, the person who is making i'tikaf, he would as well pump his iman, get closer to Allah. So, the Irtikaf becomes compulsory when the person makes a vow. Actually, in your ibadah, when you make it a, you know, a vow for it, if it's supergraphy, a voluntary ibadah, it becomes compulsory. So if you have made, for example, a vow upon yourself to fast particular days, even though they're not the month of Ramadan, they become compulsory as the month of Ramadan. There is no difference between that and the vow. So the irtikaf can become compulsory. Just just like the Udhiyah, uh, it's not compulsory on the poor person to produce an Udhiyah, but if he vowed to produce an Udhiyah, it becomes compulsory on that poor person because he vowed it. Nadr. Or in Urdu, they say Nazr. Whether it's Nadr or Nazr in the Urdu, or a vow in English, it is commitment and Wa'awfu bil Uhud, and also Subhanahu wa Ta'ala, uh, uh, Allah really says, that is the ones who are Yufuna bin Nadr. They are fulfilling their vows. So they're fulfilling their vows, they have to. Out to be nadrik, the right of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is more of a priority to fulfill it. So this is the right of Allah because you made another to Allah, so you have to fulfill it. So in general, the etikaf, the seclusion, is not compulsory unless it, you have vowed it. The i'tikaf in terms of days and nights, the minimum of it is an i'tikaf of a 12 hours. So you either i'tikaf a day, i'tikaf a night, or a day and a night. But there is no such thing as some of the scholars find in the books that they say that you make an i'tikaf for half an hour, 15 minutes, or 20 minutes, or two hours, and then from that, they, for example, they uh, put into some of the massages like ours in our country, as soon as you come to the masjid, alhamdulillah, most of them will be removed. I remember when I was a, a young person, as soon as you come to the masjid, he says, I don't know if you have uh, Arab countries who share me in that uh, uh, phrase, you know, in the masjid. They don't have that Libya. Jordan is here. Okay. No way to the tikaf, I don't know That is, I intend a tikaf as long as I'm in it. That does not work. It's not really right. Because this is not a tikaf. You could say it's a tisam. You could say a ribat. 
You can't say itikaf. Itikaf has a terminology and it has conditions and it will be invalidated. But not just simply that I make an itikaf by simply saying, ah, I made an itikaf for half an hour or as long as I'm in the masjid. So that's number one. Number two, that the companions and the Prophet and the companions, they did not have such a thing. You cannot just make an intention of, I, as long as I'm in the masjid, make an itikaf. They haven't done it, so we don't do it. And whatever they have done, we look for. We can only invent or elevate something from our own and bring something out of your po- out of our pockets. You just have to leave from Allah, Qal Rasul. So, the itikaf, the minimum is 12 hours, which is a night or a day. So if you make an itikaf for the night, and this is some of the scholars they say, they have to enter before the night starts, and that is before the sunset. And if they want to make a tikaf of the day, they have to come before the day starts, and that's before Fajr. So, and that is the day and the night. So if you want to finish the night, you come out when the night finishes, that is after Fajr. So after Fajr, you'll punish your night. And if you started off before, before Fajr, for your day, you come out after sunset. Do you understand that? So you come inside before sunset, you go up before, after sunset, you have made a ticket for what? Day and the night. Day and the night. So if you came inside before the night, which is before the side of the sunset, and you came out all the way to the sunset, you have made a ticket for 24 hours now. And day and the night. Right. Now, the Prophet as I said, he used to make a tikaf at the beginning of Ramadan. As in the hadith, he used to make a tikaf at Ashur al awl the first 10 minutes. The reason behind this is that the tikaf was made in that because of the month of Ramadan, is a holy month. But this most equal reason, the Prophet was seeking the night of Al-Qadr. And this night of Al-Qadr, I have to explain it to you in order to make sure that you understand why the Prophet of Allah had made this etikaf. This night of Al-Qadr, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to me make it the best of the night, and the Lord creates whatever He wills and He chooses. So He chose this night to be the best of all night, like He chose some of the hours to be better than other hours, like the last hour of the Jumu'ah before sunset is the best of the hours, where you can make the dua. And the best of the days in the sight of Allah, according to what we believe, is the day of al and the best of the night is the night of Al-Qadr. The best of the surahs is Surah Al-Fatiha. The best of the verses is Surah Ayat Al-Kursi. And so on and so forth. The best of the angels, the best of the prophets and mankind, not to say creation Muhammad. So I said, the best of the places is Mecca. All of you chosen by Allah Azza wa Jal. So he chose that night. And that night happens to be, number one, it's the night يُفْرَقُ فِيهَا كُلُّ أَمْرٍ حكيم. In that night, all the year, destiny will be set. So, the preserved tablet, which has everything, the angels will, talk, will take the commands which will take for that year on that night of al qadr So, every angel, like the angel of the death, you will know those people who are going to be, you know, dying on the night of al qadr for the whole year. So, فيها يفرق كل أمر حكيم. And the second issue is that إنا أنزلناه في ليلة القدر. Very, we have revealed that Quran, which is the book of Allah, in the night of al qadr here the revelation is talking about, for, which is from the preserved tablet, to the Bayt uh, al house of honor, house of might, which is the nearest heaven. From there, Jibri Salam used to go to the Prophet Sallallahu within 23 years, back and up, back and up, uh, taking the Quran according to the occasions. But in that night, one go, the whole of the Quran came from the preserved tablet all the way to the house of Bayt al in that night, so night, this night as well is a night of peace where also the angels descend down and headed and led by the angels so those angels and those and as well they were accompanying the Quran when it was revealed not only that this is a night where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said it is better than 1000 months whether you're going to say it is 83 years or more or it's better than 1,000 months. And it gives you the lifespan that you need to be in order to match those people. The time of Adam, alayhi salam, they used to live for 900, 1,000 plus. You will never be able to catch up with their ibadah unless you have boosters. 
Why one of the Musas at the night of al Qadr Khayru bin Azisha? So imagine the person have been, uh, uh, mashallah, guided to get the heart of al Qadr more than once in his life. If he lived, for example, for six years, that is the, you could say, the Prophet said, A'ma'u Ummati, the age of my Ummah, in 16 Sadr. Wa qadimu ma'ajru barik. So a few of them will exceed the air in 70. So between 16 and 70, if the person lives for 60 years, so for example, if he had started to make a, uh, the uh, the the fast of Ramadan is 15 years old, so it gives him 45 Ramadans. 45 Ramadan, mashallah. That's a lot. So a lot of night of Al Qadr. So this is why the night of Al Qadr is a blessed night. So the night of Al Qadr, and also we have a hadith where the Prophet said, the major books that were revealed in the night of Al Qadr were very, we find, uh, not just in Al Qadr, but in Ramadan. They find, for example, the scrolls of Ibrahim. They were revealed on the seventh night of Ramadan. The, for example, the uh, sorry, the Torah on the seventh. So I think the uh, scrolls of Ibrahim. Maybe the scrolls of Ibrahim the seventh. The Torah on the thirteenth. Well, I can't remember, but I know that the Zabur is on the nineteenth, and the Quran is on the twenty-fifth. Uh, so it could be the Bible and the Torah. So the Torah on the seventh, the Injil is on the thirteenth. And Zabur is on the 19th, and the Quran is on the 25th, Wallahu ta'ala a'la. And this is the hadith which is authenticated by our Shaykh al Ali. So the Quran was revealed in the last 10 nights. So the Prophet ﷺ, maybe that is why the reason he used to fast, sorry, he used to make etikaf in the first days of Ramadan, believing because the other scrolls were revealed, what? In the beginning of Ramadan. And then he shifted his etikaf to the middle section, which is from the 11th to the 21st. So he used to go into the 11th, goes inside after the 10th night, he goes into his itikaf before sunset, and on the 20th day, like today, he leaves after sunset. So he leaves after sunset tonight, he's finishing the itikaf for the middle section. And they used to be companions making itikaf with him. And when the Prophet of Allah had the vision, and he came to him vision, that is the Night of Al Qadr is in the last 10 nights, and his family, wives, it doesn't indicate which one, when she woke him up, it happens that he forgot it, the Prophet. He forgot when it So the Prophet was told when it Al Qadr. And then when he woke up, he forgot. That vision came to him. And in that vision, he knows that it is going to be when? In the last 10 nights. So in that particular year, when he was fasting, when he was making the tikaf in the middle section of Ramadan, he normally goes after the 20th, the day the 20th, he would go after sunset, he did not leave, and he told the companions, he who had made the tikaf with me, let him make a tikaf for the last 10 months. For verily, I have been given the ru'ya uh, that it is in the last 10 nights, the night of al -Qadr. Not only that, companions with their visions in Arabic means that we have visions from a number of companions coming to as well to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that is the night of Al Qadr where in the night, 10 months of Ramadan, that's to confirm. So the companions having the same visions, like who had seen the vision of, uh, for example, the, the, the Adam, Abdullah ibn Zayd, and in that Adam came to the vision and then confirmed by who? The Prophet. And then the same vision was seen by who? So that's Tawat al Ru'ya. Ru'ya has been seen by the Abdullah ibn Zayd who had seen the Adam. And then <coughs> Al Khattab, the Prophet confirmed that vision and we took our Adam from a vision. But of course, we don't take now Tariqah from a vision. Because we don't have a Prophet to confirm that. Okay? We took the Adam from a vision because the Prophet will not confirm. That's why. When I'm just saying this, some of even some of the Zema'at, some of the sects, the deen is better than a vision that the leader of theirs had seen it. And he made a study of lots of thousands and millions and people had, you know, and he upon a vision. No, the vision here is not right. Because the vision, it, it makes you happy, but you can't build sharia from it. You can't take deen from it. A deen muqtami. It's being finished and sees with the death of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You can't add anything to it. And yawma akwantu lakum dina. So, it happens to me in the last time like, so, that is why the Prophet kept to make the last 10 months. What happened once, 
is that the Prophet Sallallahu he had made a travel, a journey, and he did not make itikaf on that particular base, so he made itikaf in the month of Shawwal. And in the last Ramadan of his, he made itikaf of 20 nights. Instead of what? 10 nights. He made itikaf 20 nights. And also, before he died, Jibreel alayhi salam, instead of coming to him once to revise the Quran, he came to him what? Twice. And that's why he had felt this is now his time is approaching and he's about to die. Prophet sallallahu when he entered his itikaf, Aisha, she asked the question, can she make itikaf with him? That is either him and he's in the masjid. The Prophet وسلم, gave her permission. Then straight away, Hafsa, she had seen that, and she said, I'm going to get the calf. So she also, she made a calf. And each person who makes a calf, he has to have a special like, a location, a special uh, a place, like a tent, or whatever, or, or, or a section, whatever you want to call it, where he makes a calf because you're going to sleep in it. And you sleep it everywhere in the masjid. You can't eat everywhere in the masjid. It has to be that, that little spot of yours. And you get the calf in it. So each one of these women, none of them have a little tent of hers. So now Aisha started, she asked, Hafsa followed because of the jealousy. Zainab, she's very jealous, sallallahu anha. She said, oh, she made his servant for Prophet of Allah came here to the masjid and he found a tent still of his wives. So the Prophet said, al birra to him. Are you after the birr? Are you after the righteousness? Are you after to make ibadah and to get reward? That means you're not after the ibadah, you're after the, uh, the jealousy. You can pick him with another, they took wives. So he had commanded for all of those to be what? Moved. No etiquette. So the etiquette for the women is allowed as long as there is no what? Fasad. There is something that will entail upon it, that there will be free mixing. The women that are coming as well, the shouting, the screaming, the report, this, and as well their laughters. Can be heard by the men, and then the men can see, can hear it, and then they get closer to the, you know, to the section where there's a separation between them, just to hear what they're saying. That's a fitna for the men, and the men can be fitna for women. There's not a so there has to be total separation for the women when they make a etikaf. And there is no such thing that etikaf in her house is better than etikaf in her masjid, because there is no etikaf in the house we're going to see. Because the Ahnaf, they say, even though she can make a tikaf in her house, there is no such thing. Right, now coming to the, so the, the women are allowed to make a tikaf as long as there is no mafsada. Mafsada means there is something which is going to be entailed, which is corruption and evil and so on and so forth. Now, can the tikaf be outside the month of Ramadan? Because the Prophet likes to make it the month of Ramadan. And the last, when he made the 10 days in Shawwal, he made them because he wanted to compensate for the days of Ramadan. The scholars, they said, based upon the Umar al-Khattab when he said, I have vowed to make i'tikaf in the night, on a night in the Masjid al-Haram. He said, Awfi bin Adrik, it was not in the Ramadan. It was outside the Ramadan. So we say it's permissible. We don't tell the people, make i'tikaf outside the month of Ramadan. But the scholars say, it is permissible. But the Sunnah uh, is not being mentioned whatsoever from the Prophet of Allah. All the companions that they used to make i'tikaf, which is the Mustahab. They recommend it outside the month of Ramadan. Okay? So the 10 days of the Prophet in Shawwal, the following month, to compensate for Ramadan. And for Abu Khattab, he made a vow. But the rest of the companions, they always make itikaf where? In month of Ramadan. This itikaf has conditions. Some of those conditions are agreed upon. Some of the conditions are not agreed upon. One of the conditions agreed upon is that the person, when he makes itikaf, is not allowed to go and go and sell and buy and come back. That's agreed upon. So you make a tikaf, you can't allow you to go for something, to go and sell and buy and come back. Or to go outside for no need. That is not allowed. So these are conditions which are agreed upon by the scholars. So when you are more taken, you're not allowed to go for something you don't need. <coughs> now, but there is allow and between all the consensus of the scholars for something that the person is in need of. Because the Prophet according to Aisha, we used to make a tikaf, he used to go for the need of the mankind. What is the need of human being? Answer, 
It's called nature. So if your answer is called nature, that means you have to go to urinate, past faces, past wind, and you have a masjid uh, sort of access to the toilets, you're not allowed to go outside. You go to the masjid toilets. Uh, you're in Geneva, you have a shower. You have access to the facilities of the masjid, you're not allowed to go outside. But if you have no access, you're allowed to go to the house of yours, and when you go to the house, straight away you finish, come back to your etika. So, this is uh, something which we have persistently. Now, something which is a need but is not a necessity. Now, if it is not a necessity, like for example, a person is in need to uh, his wife to pay him a visit. Is she allowed, the woman, to pay a visit to her husband? Yes, she's allowed. Probably, Safiya, she paid a visit to the Prophet وسلم, when he was in his etiquette. Safiya, whom she comes from a, a Jewish background. And Prophet said he stayed with her and she talked with him. And when he wanted, she wanted to go. She does not live just like Aisha, stuck to the house. In that was someone said, she's a bit of walk. So the Prophet went out with her because to be safe. So he accompanied her. So that's it is for something which is essential. It is not a but it's essential. So he went out to. So that is no problem because he wanted to give her a lift. So he went to lift, and that's when the two companions from the Ansar saw the Prophet with her. She was totally covered, and they started going fast. Prophet said, Take slow down. In the house of Iyya, she is my wife. They said, Subhanallah, the Messenger of Allah, we think we're going to have a doubt about you, that you are a different woman. He said, Ali, in the Shaytan, and in Adam, my job done if you go over the and Yakifa, if you Shaya. That is the Shaytan runs into the human being, just like the blood, blood runs into the veins. And I, uh, I was afraid that this Shaytan will throw something into your heart in even narration. Shara. And yet, you have to look at Shara. So, this is another to, to put heart, the evil into your heart. And that is, that is why. So, the Prophet of Allah, he cleared that from their heart. Even though they didn't have any doubt about the Prophet. But if you see something like this and you can't interpret it, uh, except that because you believe that the man will not do something you know, good, is always good. But if you have somebody else, and somebody else said the same thing about that person, now that will come back. And I'll give you an example. If you have seen somebody with a sheikh, mashallah, with a, a woman who is really totally covered, and he's talking in secret, you're going to see his wife, definitely. Okay. So you've seen him in a different uh, market as well. He is uh, talking to that woman who's his wife, inshallah. This is a good, good opinion. But the way that he talks to her is like, you know, he's, like, he's afraid. You'll see it, mashallah, I have a good opinion. But the Satan put something in your heart there. So if somebody else came to you, you know that Sheikh son, so yeah, he's a dodgy man. You know, I believe that. Straight away, he said, I believe that. Why? Because that thing in the Shaytan that he put into your heart came out. Ah, yes, that's why. And now I wonder, no wonder, it was not because of, you know, that he was talking to his wife, he was a dodgy man. So that is why, Prophet of Allah, he cleared it now. Khalas, he's sophie. That's what you're all doing, he won't have a doubt about you. Shaitan, even regarding the Prophet, he will put into something in your heart regarding me and the hypocrites around the Medina. Coming back. So she's allowed the women to advise it, the wife, the Prophet of Allah given. The person is allowed also to go outside the masjid to get food if there is no food to be put to him. The person is allowed to go outside the masjid from his etikaf if he's to be uh, 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 treated by a doctor because he hasn't got a doctor to come to him. But if the doctor comes to him, food comes to him, toilet is inside the toilet in the masjid, he is not allowed to what? To go outside the masjid. Am I allowed to go into the library? Like for example, this one, if it's a masjid. If the library is within the vicinity of the masjid, it is allowed. So that library is part of the masjid. So that, that. But the shop is not part of the masjid. There is no such thing that the masjid shop is part of because the person who's the waqif, the one who made the masjid, he made that shop as a shop. And basically, there's no one. Have you ever had any prayer inside, even in Jumu'ah? Yes. yes? Okay, if it is the case, then it's part of the masjid. If you pray in it, it's part of the masjid. It's, you pray in the shop, it's part of the masjid. So it's according to what who had said the masjid. So if it is the kitchen, do you pray as well pray in it? No. Okay, so the kitchen, the kitchen. So <laughs> you go there and take your food and come back. <laughs> but you don't say stay in the masjid, in the kitchen. 
we have something, alhamdulillah, to make sure that the, the masjid is not, you know, all the toilets. Yes, uh, but you're not making the in the toilet, in the other side of the masjid. Because there is no prayer in the toilet. Fine. The etikaf will be invalidated if the person had made intercourse. The ayah. Don't intercourse with them if you are making etikaf in the masjid. So the person is not allowed to make mubah. You will invalidate. Now, kissing the wife, hugging the wife, embracing the wife, and all of that, we treat it the same thing as when the person is in Ramadan. So if you are in the masjid, I mean, which area are you going to be in the masjid you're going to be kissing your wife? I mean, it's going to be... It's not right. And you, you're not allowed as well to put her inside your tent and zip the tent and stuff. Because it's not right. Okay? So it's not a place. But some of the scholars said this is not allowed. Some of the scholars said it is disliked. Some of them, they said, if you need. And you said this is a shadow. I don't think there's a kiss without a shadow. Kiss is going to be with a shadow. Shadow means the lust. There's no such thing of no button, no shadow, no kiss. You can't. You know. Kiss is a kiss. So you kiss the wife, you kiss, or on the forehead, or on the cheek, or anywhere else. It's a loss. So I would say avoid that. As much as possible, your intercourse will invalidate your etika. So now, coming now to the point when we have to explain now everything regarding the person who is allowed inside, is fasting condition. Some scholarly said, La tikafa illa bisal. There's no etika except with fasting. That's a hayf from the Prophet. Now, some of the scholars said, no, because it's not, because the Prophet of Allah, when Umar Khattab said to him, I have made a vow to make a tikaf in the Masjid al-Haram, so he said, Alfa bin Adal, there was no fasting. But uh, uh, that there's no fasting, we don't know. He said, outside the month of Ramadan, but we don't know. And the matter is something else, that another takes another sort of dimension. So, this hadith still stands. There is no etikaf except with fast. So when the person is etikaf, he makes etikaf while he's fasting. So some of them they said it's a condition, some of them they said it's an obligation, some of them said no, it is not a condition or obligation. Our Sheikh al Thameen, he says, no, we don't need to have fast in it, but the etikaf is always in Ramadan, so you're going to be fasting. So if it's outside Ramadan, we say it is permissible with that fasting. Our Shaykh al Mani used to say that the Kafa Yusan has to be the fast of the fast song, and the fast is there because it's a, as a, to be a condition of something else, but it's a must upon you. Now, coming to the point where the person is in his etikaf, where is it permissible? Is it all the masajid? The ayah which says, Wala tu bashi ruhunna illa wa antum akifuna fil masaj. Don't intercourse with the wives. When you are making etikaf in al masajid, the masajid. One to akifuna fil masajid. In English, you are not excellent. So, so, one to akifuna fil masajid, that means when you are making etikaf in that the masajid. The here, al, the Arabic language. It is not with the consensus of the scholars, listirak. Listirak means all the masajids, any type of masjid. While it is Musajid, and even the scholars they said, you're not supposed to say Musajid because there is no Tasghir. You cannot belittle the Masjid. That's the Masjid, always oh, Masjid, can't Musajid. It's not really from the etiquette, say Musajid. And it's an Arabic language, Masjid, Musajid. So every word you can make that small out of the word. And this is only an Arabic meeting. So if you are, for example, Ahmad Uhaymid, Basal Musayyid, so you make it smaller. Okay. Uh, so they said masjid musayjid, so, but because the masjid always has to be paid, I mean, big in, as in, in spiritual wise, should not be musayjid, but it doesn't matter. We say, not scholars, they don't agree that any, any place you could have, you know, any place you pray, for example, you pray in the street. Can you get together in the street? Because the masjid, the masjid is called masjid as well. Because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, وَعْقِتُ سِتَّةً that I've been given six, the other prophets have been given. That is, وَحَيْتُمَا أَدْرَكَتْ نِسْلَةً Wherever I could pray, wherever I am, I could pray. 
So these areas, whatever it's, I, wanna, I don't have to be wajuri, I do masjidah. And the earth was made to be what? Masjid. But I can I, for example, go to the shop, I'm making a tikab rather than the shop. No, the, the scholars, they don't really agree with that. So they said, al masajid doesn't mean all the masajid. Now, it doesn't mean all the masajid, so which masajid? Now, this is where we come to the difference among the scholars. But for me, I am, for me, is white and black. Just like this. So you could see white and you could see black. So the masajid, the word masajid in the Quran, it doesn't mean any masjid. You can't just have your place of musalla into your house, it's to be a masjid. And then you make it in Kafirat. And that is what the scholars say. It has to be a masjid jama'ah. Some of them said masjid with a congregational prayer. Some of them they said it has to be a masjid jami'ah, not jama'ah also. There's a jum'ah in it because the person who's making a tikaf is going to be one who there is, it's going to be jum'ah. So it's not supposed to go to leave another masjid to meet the jum'ah and come back to his tikaf. So the jum'ah has to be established into the masjid. It's another, another sign. And some, and that's other very few, is which is a hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, hadith for Dayfah ibn Imam, La i'tikafa illa fil masajid thalatha. There is no i'tikaf except for the three masjids. The three masjids here is exactly the three masjids mentioned in the hadith, La tushaddu rihal illa ila thalatati masajid. La turmadu muti illa ila thalatati masajid. That is, the designated religious journey should not be done to any masjid except for the three masjid. I mean, if I want to go to a particular masjid to teach, no problem. If you think that particular masjid has got a reward, that's not right. Except for what? Three masjids. No other masjid. Now, you cannot designate a journey to any masjid, wherever it is in the world, except for the three masjids. But if you want to go to another masjid just to, for the sake of, for example, to meet somebody or to teach, but to think that there's extra reward, it's only the three masjid. So this hadith is exactly the same tone and the same words as la tikafa illa fil masajid thalatha. There is no i'tikaf except for the three masjids. Masjid al-Haram, Masjid al-Aqsa, Masjid al Prophet of Allah's Masjid, Masjid al-Aqsa, which is in Bayt al-Maqdis, and the Masjid of the Mecca in Haram. The best of all, of course, the Masjid al-Haram. Now, the second one, the Masjid of the Prophet. Why I say that? Because of the number of multiple prayers you're going to get. For very, the Masjid al-Haram, you're going to get 100,000. In multiple prayers. Whereas in the Masjid of the Prophet, you're going to get 1,000. Whereas in the Masjid of the Masjid al Aqsa, you're going to get 250, not 500, as some people think. It's 250 because, as the Prophet of Allah said, masjid, Salah in my Masjid will equal four Salah into the Masjid of Aqsa. So if it's four, and it's got 1,000, that is 250. So now we know that this is the Hadith. Now, this Hadith, some of the scholars said, there's no etiquette. So those other scholars they say, no, that hadith cannot be included. Why? It is not authentic. Some of them did. But, alhamdulillah, the authenticity is clear as the sun is clear. So that's been uh, number one. So for those who had said not authentic, then we understand why. Because if it became authentic to them, they will implement it. Otherwise, you said, no, it's authentic, but there's no others, there's no others that implemented it. Subhanallah. When you say like this, we want to understand which is the basis, which is the asal, the asal. Is it the hadith, the hadith of the Prophet or is it if, if we know that somebody had implemented it or not? Which one is the asal? Is it the hadith of the Prophet Allah? Or do we need to make sure that the hadith is functioning? We have to know if there is somebody, a scholar, had taken on board this hadith. I'm asking. Al-Imam al-Qurashi, al hashim Imam al-Shafi, rahimahullah, in his book, which is called Al-Risala. This is a great book. Al-Risala. In which he had laid down the principles. He said, Al-Hadithu aswan bi nafsif. The Hadith is in itself the asl. So you don't need to have other, say, Al-Hadithu yathbutu bi nafsif. Hujjatun bi nafsif. Aswan bi nafsif. You cannot, the hadith comes with the Prophet well, I don't need, if I see the hadith and it's clear cut, it means this, I don't need to go and wait who had done it, who had implemented it. So unless that hadith of course 
it's been abrogated or but if the hadith hasn't been abrogated and the hadith is clear cut and it does not have any more more than meaning because if we have more than one meaning then the students of knowledge will now see which meaning should be taken but if the hadith is clear cut and the hadith hasn't been opposed by other hadith then we cannot say that we can't implement it because we didn't see any other scholars. We could, the scholars had seen it in their own eyes, and they did not implement it, and they did something wrong, put it aside. That's not right. That's not right at all. One of those examples we could bring it just to be similar to that one, which is the example of the Hajj. When the person he had made his Hajj, the Prophet وسلم, said that when you finish from Muzdalifah, and on the day of the Hajj, which is the 10th day, that you, 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 you throw your stone, your Jamal, the Mutl Aqab al Once you throw the stone, then you're allowed to take off what? Your ihram clothes. Straight But this taking off the ihram is going to be your luxury for doing that as long as you do your tawaf before sunset. Do you understand that? The hadith. So if you delay your tawaf after sunset, you became a sacred haram again. You have to put the what? The ihram again in order to make the tawaf. So that, if you want to make a tawaf with normal clothes, you have to do it before sunset. So this hadith, there's a war against it. For some of the scholars, he said, war. I'm, I mean, you know what I'm, I'm talking about. It's a war against it. And because, well, there's no other scholars, and this is qawul shad, and you could say, well, I'm not able to respect the scholars, like our shiuch, the lean, obviously. It's qawul shad, qawul shad means something which is strange, you cannot be, you just can't just go into it. SubhanAllah. The hadith is there. And it's authentic. Do I need to go and wait for somebody to implement it? There's no opposition to this hadith. Hadith is done. So I don't need to. And we do have people implementing this hadith. Abai ibn Abi and others. But I'm just saying, we don't have to have that one. And as for the hadith of la tika fa illa fi masjid al we say, number one, when you say to the people that the ayah does not mean any masjid, it means the masjid is called the Jumu'ah or the Jama'ah. But Sheikh Matim, where is the proof? If you gave us a proof, this is our proof to say, no Kaf except the three masjid. What is the proof? Because you have limited that masjid. You said the masjid is every masjid. And you say to the other people, no, it's not every masjid. The other person is going to ask you, what is your proof for it? Where is your proof to limit it to, to a particular masjid that's got the Jumu'ah in it? So whatever you proof you're going to bring it, we're going to bring the same proof for that. The three massages. So the proof of yours is the proof of ours. Because you say that the Prophet of Allah, the companions, did not do itikaf in the house. Correct. The Prophet of Allah did not do itikaf except in the masajid. Correct. But where is the Prophet of Allah's itikaf? Where are the companions of itikaf? That's number one. Number two. The narrator of the hadith is Hudayf ibn Yaman. And he understood from it the prohibition of making it in Kaf except in the three masajid. And that is, in Masjid Kufa, he is objecting on a great companion, Allah Masjid, and his father, his student is God. So he said to him, when he saw those people, لا اعتكاف إلا في المسجد الثلاثة There is no اعتكاف except in the three masajid. So for they from Abdullah Masjid, he said, لعلهم حفظوا ولم تحفظوا Maybe they know something that you don't know. He said, no. I've heard this from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. There is no ihtikaf. So they told me the Yaman, he objected on Abdullah al Mas'ud, and these people making ihtikaf in the Masjid of Iraq. Also, we have from other scholars, Sayyid Musayyid and others, they said, لا اعتكاف إلا في مسجد نبي. There is no ihtikaf in the Masjid of the Prophet. Masjid of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Masjid of the Prophet, Masjid of the Haram, Masjid of the Prophet. But Masjid Dutti is not a Masjid of the Prophet. But at the end of the day, we do respect those people who take the other opinion. You have uh, given me the opportunity in this lecture, and I have to point out what is my belief. For me, it's black and white. Prophet Sallallahu and the companions, all their itikaf was in the Masjid the Thalatha. But those who are companions, Tafarraqu fil Ansar, we don't have any proof that they made the itikaf. That's number one. Or they told me he had objected, even if Abdullah al Mas'ud, he had seen those people making a tikaf, he objected to Abdullah al Mas'ud, saying that those people are wrong, making a tikaf there. 
So he had made the hujja upon him. So because of that, we believe that the itikaf in those three masajid, Allah Ta'ala A'lam, but at the same time we respect the opinion of Shaykh Salaf al-Fuzan, the opinion of Ibn Baz before him, and the opinion of Ibn Baz before him, those are the opinions of the scholars, uh, Rahimahullah. But remember to bear in mind all the etiquettes and conditions that have been set in my talk regarding the etiquette. And now finally, while well, I give you the time for the question, what time is the, uh, 26. 26, we've got just about some time, just to make sure that you understand the night of Al-Qadr, that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, that is, to make the i'tikaf for it beginning from tonight. This is the 21st night. So, you are going to have how many nights i'tikaf? Anybody to tell me that, please? Can you just fill out the gap? One. The person who's sat at the back is the room. Now. Huh? How many times you want? Yalla. For the back room. Nine nights? Are you sure? You're going to have minimum ten nights and possible eleven nights. Okay? Minimum ten nights and possible what? Eleven nights. That's just counting. Twenty-first. Twenty-second. 23rd, 24th, 25th, 26th, 27th, 28th, 29th, and the 30th. Because the 30th night is after the 29th day. Do you understand that? The 21st night is after the 20th day. How many days are you going to have as minimum in Ramadan? How many days are you going to have in Ramadan? 29 days minimum. So when you have 20 days, 9, 29 days in Ramadan, then the night following the 29th is called the what? The 30th night, which is the 10th night, I'm going to be 21, 22, 23, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 30th night. But if Ramadan is 30 days, you're going to have what? 11 night, the 31st night. Is that understood? So it starts from sunset now. The hadith of the Prophet will say, where it says, Ka salla al fajra, thumma dakhala fi murtakafi. That he had prayed the fellow, that is tomorrow. And he entered his itikaf, is not he entered his itikaf, that means the itikaf, the beginning of the itikaf. No. He had entered his spot where he makes his itikaf. As when he came to make the itikaf, is the night, sunset. So before sunset, you understand that? So when he prayed the fellow, he entered what? His place where he sits, the tent that he has made for himself, the location, whatever you want to call it. So, khibai. So, the, tonight, the only make a is before sunset. You can start from now. After sunset, you miss the night for the tikaf. You miss the night, it is, but you miss the night. It will start the tikaf from the day, which is from the fajr. So the night starts from now. Enter before sunset. When you leave, you're going to leave after fajr of the last night. After fajr of the last night. So, if you are making Eid, Fajr, make the Fajr, and then you go home, you make your shower and everything, you come to the Eid prayer, and you have made your 10 nights as a minimum. You could make 11 nights. 10 nights down. Now the Prophet Sallallahu he said to us that the night of Al-Qadr is in the last 10 nights. Now the reason the Prophet Sallallahu he forgot is the hadith of Ramadan al Remember he said it was a vision, and he forgot. The reason he forgot is that there was two people, we don't know their names, had a dispute. He said, خَرَجْتُ لِيُخْبِرَكُمْ لَيْلَةَ الْقَدْرِ أَيَّ لَيْلَةٍ هِي He came to the companions when they are in the Tikaf. To tell them, when is the night of the Qadr? He had a vision. So he told them, he can't tell them. But, he forgot it. Why? Because two people disputed. Now that dispute is no good. But the Prophet says, وَعَسَى أَنْ يَكُونَ خَيْرًا لَكُمْ But even it's no good, but this could be what? Good for you. So it's bad as a dispute, but it's good as a result. What is good about it? Number one, that if we knew which night it is, we're going to do that night and sleep on the rest of the nights. Two or not. So we don't know. So that's number one. Wait. Number two is that, that the person, when he doesn't know the night of Al-Qadr, he will be striving in ibadah more than if he knew the night. So it's not this particular night, but he'll be striving in ibadah. He is seeking ibadah. So his target is the ibadah. It's not just that particular night. So that's number two. 
أنا بطري وأرفض أتوفى صلى الله عليه وسلم والحمد لله يسأل والتنسوها في العشر الأواخر من رمضان but seek it in the last ten nights of Ramadan 21st, 22nd, 23rd, 24th, 25th, 26th, 27th, 28th, 29th, 30th and if there is a 30th, 31st seek it in the ten nights but the Prophet وسلم, he had put more emphasis those small emphasis is not for you as to say well I'll just go to the emphasis, no because we don't know when the night of Al-Qadr is number one number two, the night of Al-Qadr is not a particular night every year it could be the same next year, it could be the same as the last year, it could be different. Allah Ta'ala Ali. Because he said, it could be this, it could be that. Allah. So it does not, it's, it's the same every year. So you are making taharri. Taharri that means you're investigating. You want to know what he's like to the khadr. Okay? You will not be able to exactly you know, make sure that this is the night of al-qadr. But you will try your best. And this tahari is with the normal naked eye. I don't need to have these super solid cameras and extra you know, cameras. And, you know, none of you heard about this. They make a shot into the sun and all of that. And they say, this is not about qadr. I know that. And the tahari is from two things. One of the night of the qadr and after the night of the qadr. One night of the qadr is laylatun. Laylatun. Samhatun Tariqah It's a night Laylatun Samhatun Tariqah It's a night which is pleasant Tariqah And La Harratun Wa La Bani It's not hot, it's not cold Hot and cold is in relation to the air So if you're living in Alaska And you have Ramadan in your winter You know, cold for you is minus 50 Warm for you is minus 10 Did you understand me? So minus 10 for them, oh mashallah, it's a pleasant night Whereas for us, freezing. 10 for us is good man. For Saudi Arabia, it's freezing. So in, in relation to the air, what is it think is pleasant man? Also, the tahari is for the after. After the night, تَخْرُونُ الشَّمْسُ صَبِيحَةَ يَوْمِهَا The day after, the shams comes out, كَأَنَّهَا لَا تَرْتَفِ It's slow down. It's not going up. Why? Because number one, لا شُعَعَلَى there's no reason for it. كأنها قصد grass dish, a grass dish. كأنها قصد feeble. So لا شو عليها feeble. كأنها قصد. That is a sign after the night. For those who watch the sun, you can distinguish. You can say, well, maybe you can see it was the 25th. Maybe it was the 24th. Prophet of Allah put the emphasis on the following. He said, seek it in what remains. Not what has passed. And this is what Imam Ibn Hibban had put into his Sahih Ibn Hibban as a chapter. That is to seek the night. Please, can you just tell the boys to be quiet? Please, can you tell the boys to be quiet? Please? So, shh. So, seek it. Seek it in the night that left. He said, Fitis'in baqain. في سبع بقين في خمس بقين في ثلاث بقين. That's important. You know what? He said تسع بقين. An interpretation it came that تسع بقين the twenty first night. If the Ramadan is nights, but if it's thirty one nights, it becomes the twenty second night. You understand? It depends upon the month which is finished. So you don't see it just on the odd 21st. 21st could be 20 second, could be 220. 21st could be 22nd, 22nd could be 23rd, and so on and so forth. Five days remain. It could be the 25th, it could be the 26th. It could be 27th, it could be 28th. But the person, if he has got he know what to do these nights, فَلَا يُغْلَبَنَّا عَلَى 25th, 27th, 29th Those don't leave them So if you are not able to do all those nights, the 10 nights Then you do the 21st, 23rd, 25th If you can't do that Then you do 25th, 27th, 29th If you're a taxi driver huh? 24 hours, mashallah 27th, important For value 
Zir ibn Qubaysh, radiyallahu anhu, he came to Qubayn al he said, you know what Allah Muzul, he said? What did he say? He said, well, man qama sallata faqad asala lillahi al-khar. He was stood up in the night prayer all night. When whole the year, that would be called the night of al-khar. All year, he didn't get the night of al-khar. He said, Abdullah ibn Masood didn't want people to defend upon a particular night. By Allah, I know which night it is. It is in Ramadan. So in Allah, oh, it's in Ramadan. And it is in the last 10 nights of Ramadan. And it is the night which Prophet Allah commanded us to make the Qiyam in it. Layla Tasadiha fi Sab'in wa Ishreen. The night which is preceding the day which is the 27th. Preceding the 27th day. Because the night which is the night. And this is the night. Qal Hal Khawaj al Shams. The Shams came out. Feeble. No Shwa'a. No rays for it. So that Abdullah ibn Abayyin Muka'at, he made an oath, it is the 27th line, and that's an emphasis, but we still, we cannot verify, it could be the 27th at the time of the Prophet of Allah at that time, but we said the night can go from 27th, 25th, 26th, but there are emphasis on that 29th, 27th line. So, you do the whole of the night, that's the best. If you can't, the witr, the odd numbers. If you can't, 23rd, 25th, 27th, you miss 21. If you can't, 25th, 27th, 29th. You can't, 27th. Most important, 27th. This is a, what do I do in the night of Al-Qadr? And how do I get it? Do I, for example, get dreams? I mean, general of the Prophet? No. Do I see the building sleeping, or the tree sleeping, the people think? No. What do I do there? Do I do like these people who make, for example, competition in the, uh, for example, in some of the masajid? No. Who is program? No. Uh, for example, Salat al Tasbih. And make special salat tasbih. Salat tasbih is once in your life, once in a month, or once in a week, or that's it. But these people, they make salat tasbih. Number one, bid'ah, the congregation. Number two, bid'ah, in a specific line. They make it, I don't know if you've heard about this, make salat tasbih. Tasbih, salat. Anybody have prayed in the masjid, salat tasbih in the masjid? Please put your finger up. Yeah, see, but which masjid? Those, I'm sorry, yeah, those. <laughs> those. <laughs> Let me salat tasbih. So all of these bid'ahs, all right? So what do I do with this? You will, as the Prophet said, He said, as the Prophet said, That is, a person who would shed the Mizrah, who would touch himself on the wives. Khas, no wives. Number two, because he didn't take care of his wife. Number two, Aiqaba Ahla. He will come, bring his family to come to join the Tarawiyah. Children, women, and wives. Number three, He would stand in the prayer as in, Make dua. So you could make dua in the night of Al-Qadr. Allahumma innaka afuun tuhibbun afwa. Always. Allahumma innaka afuun tuhibbun afwa. Allahumma inni a'udhu bi ridaka min sakhatik wa bi mu'afatik min ruqubatik wa a'udhu bika minka la u'sitana an alika anta kama ta'ala ala nafsik. The dua in the night of Al-Qadr. Also, Tarawih. He who prays with the Imam until he finishes with him is like he prayed the whole of the night. Don't exceed 11. 11 rak'ah is a set. Don't exceed 11. We let the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. From the third issue, Quran. Recitation of the Quran. And interpretation of the Quran. And learning the Quran. All of that is from the Ihya al It doesn't mean to stand awake. But because our Isha and our Tarawih comes very late. I mean most of the people that during even, not just the last time everyone's during the whole Ramadan, they don't sleep until Fajr. Some of them. If they sleep about half an hour, an hour. So you are making almost Qiyam the whole of the night. So you're not supposed to be saying, oh, I'm not going to be sleeping. You could sleep, inshallah. I think I've got how many minutes now? Two minutes? Five minutes. What time? 24? 26. Oh, 26. I've got eight minutes. Got here. So if you have any questions, you guys would have heard, please just go ahead and I'll ask the ones who are closer to the table. They'll have a time. If you could, the Mikha Tikah, for example, comes out, uh, comes in before Maghrib, goes up after Fajr, no problem, because you make it a Tikah one night, it's no problem. Because the Prophet of Allah, he made a Tikah ten nights and he left. He made it in Ramadan. Every night, you're going to miss like this. You're not going to be doing right. But if you could do like this, the Tikah, it's not going to be as a as Tikah of the ten nights. Ten nights means ten nights with the days of it. Right? Prophet will not come out. We used to make a tikaf, middle of 10 days until today. You'll come out. Now, for the. People who've got medical conditions have to have a fast, but that means they can't do a tikaf. 
The people who have medical condition, can they make etikaf? Of course they can make etikaf. But the women who cannot make etikaf, like for example the women who are of the menses, <coughs> menstruation. The women who got istihaba, for long period, she could make etikaf. But the people who cannot fast, they could make etikaf, there's no problem. But we said, the difference among the scholars, that the etikaf is that fasting is a condition or not. And we said that, most of the scholars said it's not a condition. And even the one who said, they don't say that it's invalidating, but it is highly recommended not to say it's a must. Now, further. Is it true that dua is made in light of You are after, huh? Sorry? Is it true that dua in light of al-qadr is going to be accepted? There is no such thing. But we say, Allah, man, naka afu to hibu al-afu, fa'afu an. And the person, uh, he would make dua all the time, and it could be answered not just in the night of Al-Qadr, but in the night of Al-Qadr, khayru min alfi shah. That's what it is. Better than 1,000 months. So it is not saying that your dua will be fulfilled. Some people in the, you know, in, in the night of Al-Qadr, they ask, Oh Lord, give me some money. Oh Lord, make me rich. And oh Lord, give me a Lamborghini. And oh Lord. And this is, you know, you want forgiveness. Allahumma inna ka'afu wa tuhibu la'afu fa'afu wa'afu. That's what you're after. To Allah to pardon you. Because Allah pardons you. Oh Lord, you love to pardon. You are in the kafu. You are pardon. You love to pardon, so pardon me. The journey is yours. Father. What is the and Sarawi? The new son fulfilled to me. The person said, Can I pray the and Sarawi? Can you just play to me because I don't understand? Shh. I understand, but I want to understand. So I understand what he said. Now. What is Tahajr and What do you think? So people, they think Tarawih and Tahajr is two different things. You're wrong, eh? Any person who believes Tarawih, Tahajr, Qiyam Layl, Salat Layl, Salat Wutr, they have different prayers, they have the same prayer. Qiyam Ramadan and Tarawih are the same thing. Tarawih is a word not in the Quran, not in the Sunnah. Not even by the companions. This is by the scholars, Tarawih, they made a name for it. But it's not mentioned in the Quran, nor the Sunnah, not even by the companions. Okay? So, Qiyam Ramadan, yes, it was mentioned. Man qama Ramadan, Iman al-Mahdisaba. Man qama Laylat al-Qadr, Iman al-Mahdisaba. He who stands up in the night of al-Qadr, he stands up in the night of Ramadan, Iman al-Mahdisaba, believing in it, hoping for the reward, Wufi Rahmat al-Qadr and Dhammi, all his previous sins will be forgiven. Even if he does Qiyam in the night of al-Qadr, just on itself, it's equivalent like making Qiyam in the whole month of Ramadan. Look how great is this. Man qama Ramadan, Iman al-Mahdisaba, Wufi Rahmat al-Qadr and Dhammi. So, Salat al-Layl. Qiyam al-Ramadan, al-Witr, al-Tahajjud, and al-Taraweeh, the five names for one prayer. The difference is that Salat al-Witr, Salat al-Layl, you will normally call it in different than Ramadan. In Ramadan, you call it Qiyam al-Ramadan. As for Tahajjud, and Taraweeh al-Ramadan. As for Tahajjud, whether it's in Ramadan or outside Ramadan, it's a prayer which is delayed. That means it's not at the beginning of the night, Tahajjud. Tahajjud means at the end of the night. So your 11 raka'ah, if you made them, in the beginning, it's called Qiyam, it could be called as well Taraweeh, it could be Salat Layl, it could be Witr. But if you made them at the end, just the last third of the night, it is called, it is called Tahajj. But if you think that they're going to play 11 raka'ah, Qiyam, and then add Tahajj, not the 11 raka'ah, 10 raka'ah, you're mistaken. You're not going to be better than the Prophet Who is better? And the Prophet of Allah had more night than you. Because the Prophet of Allah's night starts from 8 o'clock, by the way, 7 o'clock. Your night now starts what more time? MashaAllah, 11 o'clock. And his night had more than that. And the people at that time, they prayed. And that's how we interpret the actual Quran, by the Sunnah. We're going to leave it like this. It's going to be like anybody can just do anything what he wants. The Sunnah, the Prophet of Allah, ties up the general words of the Quran. It has to be. Otherwise, we can't do anything. So, if it is more than 11 rakah, so why do you make it 21? Make it 17. Eh? Give me a message that makes it 17 rakah. No, no message. There's no message that makes it 17 if it's been tied up or any rakah. So, there's no message that makes it 17. So, why 21? I'm asking when the hadiths are authentic. So, why stick it to 21? <laughs> stick to 17. Stick to 19. Stick to 24. To, uh, 25. Uh, 47. 51. Make a number you like. But they stick to the number the Prophet was stuck to. 11 raka'ah. 
And the Prophet Allah was caring about the quality, not the quantity, yet, the quality. And we've got only half minutes, so we leave that, inshallah. Subhanakallah, alhamdulillah, ashadu alayhi wa sallam.